Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are gonna cover the basics as to how an electronic speed control works. We're also gonna get into a big topic about PWM within an ESE. What does it mean, what does it do, and how does it affect the function of the brushless motor slash ESC system? We're also gonna talk about something that you may or may not have known. Some ESCs are actually programmable where you can change the PWM rate. Does that make your motor faster? Does that make your motor slower? What does it ultimately do to the motor and should you be changing it? That's something that we'll talk about in the slides below up on the whiteboard. Let's get started and talk about the basic function of our speed control relating to commutation. So our brushless motor has three wires coming out of it as we all know and I've labeled them as X, Y, and Z. Now anytime the speed control uses two of those wires we can produce a phase so if you go ahead and take x and y you are producing phase a this is just what we're calling it for today if you take x and z you get phase b and then you take the last remaining that we haven't covered yet y and z and you get phase c now all these phases is exactly what makes the function work within our brushless motor. Now we look at the diagram we have above here and you can see that we place the phases here and we have a two pole brushless motor example where the two poles exist as a north and south. This is gonna be one example that we're talking about and this is gonna be another example. So not to confuse it as a four pole, I'm only talking about the north and south for the first example. And what's important here is as this phase A is going to be powered we want to make sure that we are able to turn it into a north pole to repel this. So let's say it's going counterclockwise. It's already moving and past that halfway point. We want to fire that phase and create that north pole so that we can push and repel that magnet away. Now what you'll notice is as the south pole comes around, we now have, want to do the exact same thing at the right time, but instead of it being a north pole that we're going to produce out of our phase A, we need to produce a south pole so again, we can repel. We go ahead and turn this into a south pole by inverting everything and then we can go and rotate that motor further. Now the same thing is happening here. As this north pole comes and swings by, we wanna make sure that that phase B is producing our north pole so that it can repel. And as the south pole comes around, we need to go and invert things again to produce that south pole to repel. And you can see all three of these phases are gonna be doing the exact same pattern every single time that magnet comes around. It's gonna be alternating between those north and south poles when required. And that's exactly what happens with electronic commutation. Our speed control knows what's going on and is able to react and respond based on when that perfect timing is available. So now what we can talk about is the last component. How does it know? Well, it knows based on back EMF exactly when it needs to go and fire a phase. Now what's important about the back EMF is that tells you the speed of the motor essentially, where it is relative position. It gives you that idea as to how fast you need to commutate. What's really critical is that you cannot speed the motor up by trying to advance the commutation that takes place. Trying to trigger these earlier is not going to make it any quicker. If that north pole isn't there yet and you try and turn it into a north pole, it's going to repel and go the opposite direction. It's really important when that north pole comes around that you turn it the phase into a north pole at the exact right moment. If you try and advance that, you're not gonna make it slower. In fact, you're gonna hurt the performance of the brushless motor, probably to the point where you can actually get it out of sync. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that commutation follows the speed of the motor. The ESC does not drive that speed of commutation in order to drive the RPM of the motor. The next question is, well, how do we get speed of the motor from our speed control if you can't control it through the commutation? Well, that's when we get into this next part here where we look at our phase B independently and only. So now we go ahead, we'll focus in on just our phase B and we'll look at two conditions, 100% throttle and then also partial throttle. We'll read also these lines here, the LiPo voltage determines the maximum RPM. So just like we talked about in previous videos, if you take a 1000 kV motor and you operate it on 15 volts or so, you're gonna get the 15 volts multiplied by the 1000, a total RPM of 15,000 RPM. Whatever that maximum voltage is, that's a maximum RPM theoretically you can get out of that motor under its own power. 
Now, what happens between that maximum and zero? Well, PWM chopping determines the RPM between that zero value and the maximum based on the LiPo voltage. That's where we can look at the diagram here. So at 100% throttle, we're looking at this diagram. What this diagram represents is our north pole is coming right by phase B. We want to turn phase B on to repel it. And once it's gone, we want to turn it off because it's no longer needed. So we go ahead, we turn it on, and then we turn it off. Now, this is under 100% throttle. We want maximum force for as long as possible or as long as, as needed is really what we're looking for here. Again, commutation speed. If it was coming by really quick, this is gonna be a short duration. If it's taking a long time to go by there, this is gonna be a longer duration in order to apply that force. So if it's going by really quick, we wanna make sure that the on time is maximized. We don't wanna turn that magnet off because we wanna receive maximum power that we possibly can. However, if we're going partial throttle, what we're gonna to wanna to do is what's called PWM chopping, where we actually turn it on and off and on and off and on and off multiple times within a second. In fact, it's on the level of kilohertz that we're actually turning this on and off. This partial throttle, PWM function happens at a very high rate that we'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, what's really important here is that when you want maximum power, you don't want to turn off that winding and you're going to get 100% speed out of it when you go ahead and do that. However, when you go ahead and you chop that signal up so that you're only getting partials, you're going to have some on time here and you're going to have some off time here. During the on time, that's when you're able to speed it up, but on the off time, it's not getting sped up. And because of this, if you were to take the average voltage and multiply the average voltage by your KV value, that's going to be the approximate speed that you'd get out of it. If you were to measure this, you could measure out an average voltage over the time duration that this, this goes through. And that's ultimately going to determine the speed at which you can rotate that motor at. Keep in mind, the commutation needs to follow that speed. You, this is how you get the speed, but you got to make sure that the commutation is taking place and matching that speed. If we wanted to slow the motor down even more, what we would do is we would take out the on time and replace it with more off time. This way we're gonna power up that winding less and it's not gonna have a strong magnetic field for when it passes by. It's not gonna have the strongest that it could have. So you're gonna limit the amount of power which limits also the speed that you get out of that motor. Now that we cover PWM and exactly what that refers to and how it functions and drives the speed of our brushless motor, let's talk about the function that you can actually program and that is the PWM rate within the speed control. Now some ESCs allow you to program these different rates. Now this is just a small collection of the common rates within our speed control. So we have 8,000, 12,000, 16,000, 24,000, and 32,000. And yes, it does go outside of that as well. And I have boxed off this number here and we'll talk more about that. Keep in mind, all of this is in kilohertz. Now the first point that we have here on this part of the whiteboard is this value. The reason why it's boxed off is because it is the stock and factory settings on many ESCs out there. Now what's important is I have this awkward check mark right here is because that value actually doesn't need to be changed for most setups that exist out there. In fact, I would say for the last 10 years, I probably have not ever gone into my PWM settings within the speed control and adjusted it based on function and performance of a brushless motor. And we'll show you exactly why in this last part here, why I haven't changed that setting. Now you can go ahead and jump into your speed control program, change the rate of that PWM function if you plan to do so. However, I would recommend that this is something for the more advanced user. If you are planning to do that, what you'll wanna make sure is when you go ahead and change the settings that you're able to monitor performance and also monitor heat, and we'll talk about why. Higher PWM settings can actually increase the efficiency of some motor types. However, you do end up sacrificing some of the heat that now the ESC is going to produce. You're gonna get more heat out of a speed control if you're asking it to produce a higher function of this PWM rate. So that means the more times that you have to go, for example, if we're looking and comparing 12 versus 32, if this represents 12, 
when you jump to 32, you're going to have a lot more vertical lines to deal with. That speed control is going to need to switch the power on and off to one particular phase. It does it through all the phases, but you know, imagining one at a time, it has to do it multiple times in a second. This is the amount of times that it's doing it within a second. So you can imagine it's a extremely high rate. Now I did want to talk about this. This is an old method that was used many years ago. I can't remember when this was actually, you know, floating around out there. And I did use it in order to compute the frequency. And I, from what I remember, I didn't really have to go and change the settings even back in the day. So this, the way that this is working is it's based off of the commutation speed and the PWM rate. You don't want to go ahead and select a PWM rate that is close to the commutation rate. That will cause all sorts of problems and this is going to allow you to stay away from that by calculating that commutation rate and making sure that the output is going to give you values higher. So we go ahead and we look at it, this formula, it really boils down to knowing the KV of your particular motor as well as the nominal voltage of your motor and then you also need to know the pole count of your motor and that's the magnetic pole. So this would be a two pole north and south, that's it. When you're looking at an example, we'll take an 1 8 scale buggy uh, I use this example quite often in the videos and I also have an airplane example here that it comes from an old setup that I've had since probably around 2012. When you go ahead plug the numbers in here you get 2650 multiplied by the 14a multiplied by 4 and divided by 20 and that works out to 7844 and that is in hertz so 7.8 kilohertz is the overall value. What we want to do is we want to choose one of these and we want to make sure we're always rounding up. We want to make sure that is going to be higher than the value that we've selected. So in this example, 8,000 would actually be okay. So based on this, I would be okay to try out 8,000 as my first setting. And if 8,000 doesn't work and the motor is not happy because I'm seeing too much heat in the motor, then I can move up to a 12,000 rate, which is the default settings in most ESCs anyway. Uh, so this is a reason why I don't move that value. 12,000, I would completely leave it alone. I wouldn't go ahead and change it if this is coming out to 8,000. I'd leave it right there and I'd base my setup on it just like all the other setups that I've ever done. Now, if we go look at the other example here with the airplane, this is now 870 multiplied by the same 14.8 volt battery and then we multiply by the pole count and this is an outrunner, so it's got 14 poles on it and we get a frequency of 9,013 hertz. So in this example, 9,013 is greater than eight 8 is no longer a good option for us. We have to move to the next value. 12K is okay. So 12K actually lands right where our default setting is. So this is already optimized for the best value that we can use within our speed control. If I did want to go on experiment, I could go and try, you know, what happens if I move up to 16. I would expect more heat within this speed control and the potential for better efficiency out of the motor. Uh, but you know, it's, it's going to be that trade-off that we're always talking about. And I don't think that trade-off is worth the, the time and effort to go and figure it out. I've always had good luck at the 12 value or the default value of whatever speed control I'm using. Well, I hope you were able to enjoy that video. I hope you learned something about PWM and all that. Please like the video if you do. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching.